Flo Allen, thank you for, for joining us. Let's start with uh, let's start with why we're here, which is next month. Norwich City women will be be playing here at Carroll Road. I mean, from from your perspective, first and foremost, I know a lot of hard workers has gone into this. What are your kind of feelings at this moment in time? As I guess probably personally, because you were someone who played football in Norfolk but had to go away to, to kind of fulfil their, their dreams of becoming a, a footballer. What are your feelings kind of sat here today knowing that that's around the corner? I guess probably excitement is, is right at the top of your list. So firstly, everyone at the football club is really excited to be hosting this, this game as a showpiece event and our final home game of the season. It's an opportunity to welcome new fans to, to Cow Road who maybe have never been here before, but also fans who are new to women's football. And uh, hopefully we can you know, sh show them what it's all about as sort of the showpiece game kind of <clears throat> alludes to. And um, yeah, for, for me, it's, it's, it's a special feeling to know that um, we're sort of uh, creating, a, you know, creating a package that people want to come and watch. Um, we've been you know, attracting regularly High attendances at the nest, three three hundred plus on a regular basis now this season, which has been brilliant from where we were a year ago to where we are now. The team has developed in in instrumental kind of phases, um, and we're as a football club we are delighted with that. But this now is the next step around. You know, let's put on a showpiece game, let's make it a really fun atmosphere, and let's get some get some more fans down here. I guess that was really going to be kind of my second question because I think it's been something that people, maybe certain people, camps of people have wanted to see for quite a period of uh, of time. What makes now the right time for this type of game to be to be held? I guess it's kind of links to what you said there in terms of the development of the team and the progress that they've made over the last 12 months. It's a number of different things. Um, we wanted to make sure when we... It, it, it's been in the conversation for a long time that, that we've wanted to do this. It had to be at the right time. Um, and at the right moment to make sure that it's it's a it's a game that actually we capitalise on and get the the most out of it. We didn't want it just to be a you know oh let's put a game on and let's not actually put all of our efforts into it. Let's do it at the right time with the right amount of marketing behind it, but also with the right purpose. So for us, the last game of the season, last home game of the season, hopefully in sunnier weather. Um, which we can never be sure of uh, living in in this lovely country. So, but but we we hope that it's something that it, is the right kind of it attracts the you know a new audience, which is the main thing that we want to do. But also attracts people maybe who come to Carrow every week as well. Um, and we can you know show peace and showcase what our women's team's all about, and also uh, the sort of different atmosphere that it might be um, for anyone who went to a, a Lionesses game, um, even when we we hosted them here. It was a very different atmosphere, um, and and that's great because it means that we can, you know, attract different people into football. We can attract new people to Cow Road, and and what more can we want? You know, we're 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 so lucky to be in a fortunate position where we are the only football club uh, in Norfolk, and that's amazing because we have such a big reach, and we're so proud of that, and we're so proud of our community, and and this is the right time to bring everyone together. Uh, I think you guys have uh, announced today that it's uh, about around about uh, 2,700 tickets that, that you've sold, which which feels like a pretty incredible number already, especially given there's there's what another month or so to go until until the game actually kicks off here. So I guess two questions. First and foremost, your response to kind of that initial take up that you've had, and I guess it probably backs up what you said there about now feeling like the right time for this type of game. But also, have you guys kind of set a target internally? Of what sort of attendance you'd like to see for for this game? Well, I think there's um, there's a lot of seats here that we'd like to fill. Um, don't get me wrong, we'd love to see Cow Road rock in at, at max capacity. But for us, it's about, you know, our tenants at the Nest, like I said, have been growing sort of week in, week out. So far, we've nearly, you know, we're just under 3,000 sales. You know, we released today we're at 2,700 after a week. You know, we, we never imagined that. Um, so for us to know that there's a want and a need as well for, for, for this type of offering... We've we've had to kind of rethink kind of how, how we now look at it for the next five weeks, which is a great problem to have. Um, and it's been brilliant because we're now thinking about what areas of the stadium do we open next? And, you know, how do we look at, uh, you know, building an atmosphere around pre-match, half time, all of these things that now it's given us more opportunities to do, um, but also more opportunities to kind of retune and redefine um, sort of that offering. And how are Sean and, and the girls feeling about the prospect of, of playing here? I'd imagine their excitement is, is probably through the roof. All the staff, all the players, 
are super, super excited. Uh, they, majority of them are all Norwich City fans and have all come through our player pathway. For, so for those players and staff, yellow and green is ingrained in them, um, which is, you know, like I said, this, this, this area for us is so special about that because everyone usually in Norfolk is ingrained in yellow and green. So the girls and Sean and all the coaching staff can't wait to get out on the pitch and hopefully put on a put on a show for everyone to hopefully come back to and watch us at the Nest next season or you know hopefully in the future when we have you know hold more games here that that actually we build on that and it's some momentum that we can we can build. What, what's your assessment of, of how the girls have, have done this season because it was a, a, an obviously an incredible great escape towards the end of, of last season and the club went through a, a lot of change being brought in house, and obviously, you know, you, you came into your role. But it feels like that momentum has continued into this season. It's been a, a remarkable campaign, hasn't it? Really, considering all of the the change that we spoke about, not really so much in terms of the the playing squad. There's been a, a few players added. What's been kind of your overall assessment of of how they've how they've got on and, and how they've performed this season? Yeah, so I think there's been quite a lot of. Uh, big sort of turning points uh, throughout our season. I think, you know, we, we go right back to the start of when the, the team was first announced that it'd be integrated into the club. And right from day one, both Stuart and Zoe Weber have been unbelievably supportive of, of where we want to take the women's team. And it is very much, we're all together, it's one club. How do we grow it together? Um, and the support we've received from the whole entire club and community has been unbelievable. Um, so in terms of how the team has got on this year, we've done... A lot better than we anticipated. I think looking at it, how, how we saw last year was, you know, we, we were fighting relegation with, with only a couple of games to go. Um, this year, we've, we've put in some performances that we've been really proud of and the points have warranted that. And credit must go to the players and also the staff who work tirelessly, tirelessly behind the scenes to, to put in performances like they do, sometimes Sunday, Tuesday let alone Sunday, Sunday, and most of them have full-time jobs or are in full-time education. So their commitment and work rate to, to the team at the moment is, is absolutely outstanding. And, and, and that kind of, um, kind of epitomises what the team's all about, is that they want to give everything when they put on a yellow and green shirt. Absolutely. And, and you've kind of spoken and touched upon the, the long-term plan. This playing here is, is just kind of another tick in, in the box along that. Where do you personally see this growing? And, uh, and I'm, I'm not going to ask you for a time scale or, any, or anything like that, but what, what are kind of your hopes as to where the women's team can go in, in kind of the coming months, weeks, years, however you want to assess it? Yeah, well, the, the sky's the limit, really. There, there's, there's no kind of boundaries on it. Every, like I said, everyone at the club wants our women's team to be progressing and to be playing the best league possible in, in, in the country. There's, there's no kind of question on that. Um, you know, yes, there's a lot of work to do to, to get there. And you look this year, we've made some small steps. Um, have we got a lot more to do? Yes, <laughs> a lot, lot more. Um, but everyone is, is fully behind the team um, from, from, from everyone across the club. So um, hopefully in the, in the next few years, we can um, start to kind of, you know, move up, move up the sort of the leagues. But it doesn't doesn't just take years. Sometimes it takes a longer time than that. So um, but yes, you know, it's such something that we have ambitions to be competing at the, you know, the highest level possible. Yeah. And, and you, you've kind of mentioned the, the club's commitment to the women's team, which you know, I think became obvious when, when they took the team. Uh, kind of in 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 house and and also of course playing playing the game here. What does it kind of look like? And I, I guess it's probably a little bit of, a, of an elephant in the room. But what does it look like from a funding perspective? Because I think that's probably where a lot of the women's game is at, and and sort of new money coming in, particularly probably at kind of uh, the, the top level rather than, than the level that, that you guys find yourselves at. But is there a commitment to kind of increase funding in in this project as well over over the long term from from your perspective? Look, we, we're really lucky that we're supported by a brilliant football club, um, and we you know have resources available to us. We we train at a Lotus Training Centre uh, now, uh, one night a week, which this year has been been massive. You know, we've been able to to tap into uh, resources around analysis and. Uh, you know, better prepare around set pieces because we've got a dome that we can go in and, and look at kind of how we, you know, change maybe our defending set plays. And little sort of resources like that have been sort of massive. Um, so so definitely we've, we've got the support behind us. It's now just about organically growing it. Um, you know, it's been great to see what the Lionesses have done this summer and it's great to see all the TV deals coming in for the Super League and, and hopefully as time goes on, um, 
that kind of, you know, the, the structure of women's football in the country, it just becomes bigger and better and the visibility is, is, is greater. I, I know I'm asking you probably questions about a long way into the future, but do you see a time on the horizon where this football club has professional women's players? Is, is that a very real kind of objective? Is that an objective that, that you could kind of see becoming a, a reality? Again, I'm not going to ask you for time scale, but it, it certainly would feel like a big step. I think Ipswich Town have, have got a couple. There are obviously numerous clubs around the country who, who, who have them. Could that become a possibility here, in your opinion? Look, we'd, we'd love to at some point in the future. And it's, it's something that we'll always, you know, strive towards because that ultimately shows development and that ultimately shows progress. Um, are we there at the moment? No. Um, like I said, we've got a lot of growth to do and a lot of things that, that we need to get right first to even get to a point where we can consider that. Um, so have we done well so far? Yes, but there's a lot more work to do to get there. Um, not to say that we won't ever get there. Yeah, and just just to, to kind of finish with a, a finishing bit on, on kind of your role, you obviously came in last summer. How, how are you finding it, that, that transition from, from playing to, to what you do now? How has it been? Has it been easier than, than you expected, tougher? How, how have you found it? I get to work with a great team, um, a great team of players, a great team of coaching staff, support staff, and everyone at the at the football club here is so supportive of uh, of the football, you know, the women's football team um, and everything that we're trying to do. I absolutely love the fact that everyone comes in and and, and players wise and coaching staff has a smile on their face all the time. For me as a player, um, and my kind of you know philosophy around it is that you've got to enjoy what you're doing. And, and so to know that players and staff are having fun um, whilst, whilst winning games, hopefully, uh, more often than not, um, is a big thing for me. Um, it's certainly been different, uh, the, the gap between a player and sort of transitioning over to the other side. It's, it's definitely opened my eyes and, and I think I probably took it for granted as a player, sort of the, uh, the sort of just turning up and, and getting on with things. So the, the behind the scenes kind of uh, the work that goes into it from from everyone across the club, so the media team, the, the the marketing team, the commercial team, everything that goes into creating a team, um, is is massive. And we're so lucky at this football club that we have brilliant teams within one big team. And and how much of I mean, you mentioned Zoe and, and Stuart earlier. From from your perspective, how much have you been able to learn from from those two in particular, but but also probably other leaders around the club as well. Yeah, look, both Zoe and Stuart have been 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 great. Their support has been monumental. Um, you know, having a female role model like Zoe um, is is brilliant. There's there's not many clubs in the country who who can say that they've got a female role model like Zoe. Um, and so for me, it's 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 been great to know that there's someone to go to for any sort of support. Um, but but both Stuart and Zoe have have been so invested in this, and and also across the club, we've we've got multiple um, people in, in positions that are always asking how we're getting on, how we can grow it, how we can develop it. And like I said, it is, it's really it is a one club and we all chip in where we need to and we all want to see things progress and develop. Uh, uh, yeah, you, you mentioned it there. And I mean, you, you think about it, this club is, is quite unique in terms of just the amount of females it has in leadership roles, all the way from the top to kind of Delia. You mentioned Zoe. I know there's some uh, people in the recruitment department and sports science as well. It does feel like we are increasingly uh, you know which is absolutely a, a positive thing we, we are seeing an increase in in, in women in, in in the game be it men's or or, or kind of women's in, in leadership roles and that you know is, is is a really welcome thing given kind of where we've where we've been as a, a game and it doesn't quite feel like we're, when it, we're where we need to be yet either does it in in terms of that I think in in football it's there's always you know similar things that, that happens in in both men's and women's football it's just football at the end of the day um and and like you said we are in such a lucky um a lucky environment in this football club that we have we have great great leaders um and and we're so lucky and and the development that we've shown is 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 hopefully only just the start yeah and and i guess for you this this job is is really interesting because i said you you were one of those girls at one point you had aspirations of of being a footballer you had to leave norfolk i guess from your perspective there's kind of a particular interest to ensure that that is no longer the case and and i guess to kind of link everything back to what we spoke about right in the middle about the the long term name that is the aim to have players like yourself lauren hemp we could we could list others who have come from this county to try and keep them here that's that that must be the long term aim from your perspective Ultimately, we will always be a club that, that wants to develop our homegrown players and we have to. Um, and we're so proud of that. And we're so proud that our, our foundation, who do a brilliant job at running our girls' uh, elite pathway, 
have always produced uh, unbelievable talent. Um, and so our job now is to try and make sure that we can retain that talent, but also how do we redevelop it? So, you know, we're, we're really conscious that, you know, football as a career only lasts for so long. So actually how are we redeveloping our players? So whether it's redeveloping them as footballers or actually as people, um, we're really passionate about that. Um, but yes, you know, that's something that we, 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 we'd love to do going forward and something that we want to be really, really passionate about and well we are passionate about but how do we retain them and how do we keep players and um and and hopefully you know the, the longevity of that as well and and will only ultimately you know hopefully contribute to the success of the team just two more from me um obviously i mentioned lauren there she's she's a, a close friend of yours i mean just how proud are, are you of her of what she's achieved a key role in, in obviously the lionesses team she was here earlier in the season wasn't she taking in a uh, a men's game. Have you been able to kind of pick up the, the phone to her for advice in, in, in this new role and kind of get ideas from her about how to how to shape it? How has how has that kind of worked? Lauren is a brilliant character and a, and a great friend of mine and what she has done with her career has been inspirational. Uh, I know when I was a teammate of hers it was astonishing to see what she could do on the pitch. Um, sometimes it was it was not a nice task when I had to defend her in training um, but but look, she's gone on to, to bigger and better things and is is flying the flag for, for Norwich and Norfolk on, on the world stage and arguably, you know, has got so much more potential to give. Um, so Lauren is, is is only ever a phone call away, should I say, but but we're so proud of her and, and so proud of what she's doing and, and we hope to see her success just, just keep going and keep going. Final one for me, you mentioned the ticket sales, which were already really strong. So those people who are thinking about coming down or maybe uh, humming and hiring whoever to come down to Cow Road next next month, what would, you, what would your message be to them? What, what would you say to them? Yes, yeah, so the ticket sales have been great. Um, we want to keep we want to keep going. We want to keep getting more people here, uh, buying the tickets. It will be a brilliant atmosphere. It will be different to a normal football game. It will be fun, engaging. I think the one word that we're trying to, trying to use to sort of, you know, demonstrate what the event will be it'll be a showpiece fixture so so there'll be things that that happen that that might not normally happen at a football game but that's because we want to be a bit different and we want to create an, an engaging atmosphere that you know get pe get people here once but the big task for us is how we get fans to come back again and how we get them to come back to the nest and and we really hope that that fans who are coming for the first time enjoy what they see uh, and and we uh, and we see them at the nest next season and hopefully at Cow Road for, for potential future games. Lovely. Thank you very much, Flo.